listening at one point, he said it wasn't deliberate. <laughs> this next one was written in 1915, if you remember it. No? And uh, its title rather belies the pace at which we're supposed to play it, but uh, I'm told I mustn't play it too fast because Audrey has trouble getting her fingers around it. <laughs> I think that's what she was talking about. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Keep the party clean. <laughs> I'll rephrase that, yeah. Okay. Um, yes, you might think this is bedtime music, but no. 
Anyway, it's a piece called Weary Blues, as I say, written in 1915. Weary Blues, here we go. One, two, Now, 
I'm going to ask Vicky, oh she's already there. Oh, yes. Now John, can you see Vicky now? Yeah. Yes. You're even, there's your fan over there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's nice to be appreciated, isn't it? Uh, now, this is one you can all join in after the second chorus. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's back to New Orleans and a New Orleans standard. Um, is it, we haven't got anybody here called Bill? We haven't got a Bill, have we? Uh, but this is, uh, it goes under various names, a bit like the Saints, but anyway, this is. Bill Bailey, won't you please come home?
surprised you as much as it did surprise us. <laughs> I don't know why they write such complicated music. I've got a bit of grape on the glasses. Oh no, it's Branson Pickles. Oh, I can see better now. While well, we're staying in New Orleans for this next one, um, anybody know where Indiana is? Yeah. Yeah. Could you tell us? Ohio. Where? Next, next to Ohio. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody know Thank where you. Ohio is? Next to Indiana. Yeah, okay, good one. Charlie, good one. Anyway, for those that were born and brought up and then left it, the, <laughs> this is, somebody wrote it, I don't know who wrote it. Anyway, uh, it is a song actually, but we're not going to sing it. Uh, it's called Back Home Again in Indiana. So he's obviously been back a few times. Anyway, Back Home in Indiana. Oh, one, two, one, two, three, four.
you very much. So where is Indiana? And Ohio is next to Pennsylvania. Thank you. Well New York. Yeah, getting closer all the time. There'll be a geography test at the end of this. Ah. And New Orleans is in which state? New Orleans. Yeah, it's in a bad state at the moment. Oh, it was. Uh, it's in Louisiana. Correct. And do you know why this music is called Dixie music? Huh? Well, you might remember, but I doubt it, when George III was on the throne, and uh, America was just another colony of the Brits. Hey, Thank you very much. Well, switch just for Boris. Yeah, three cheers for Boris. There was a... Uh, <laughs> there was a dispute, a boundary dispute, between British colonies established in Maryland, Delaware, and indeed, as you've just heard mentioned, Pennsylvania. Yeah. They couldn't resolve it themselves, so George, well at least I assume that it was him, it could have been somebody else I suppose, he sent across two surveyors to uh, resolve this boundary dispute. One was called Mason and one was called Dixie. Ah. Not of Doc Green, no, this one, <laughs> this one was a surveyor. And uh, they uh, surveyed um, these boundaries and they drew a line effectively if you were looking at a map from east to west that became known as the Mason-Dixon line and coincidentally it became a line that marked a boundary between north and south and therefore slavery in the south and freedom in the north. Um, it didn't become um, attached to music until the original Dixieland jazz band uh, made a recording in 1916 and they put Dixieland in their name. So there you are. It originated in New Orleans therefore, spread to Chicago and... Sto Have I told you about Storyville? No. Uh, I'll tell you that later. <laughs> Otherwise they get bored. Yeah, they've heard it all before you see. You haven't heard it? Well, listen up, I'll tell you. Yeah. Anyway, I'll tell you about Storyville after the next one. Now, one of the... Start slow. I think what? I just want you to start slow. Thank you, dear. Well, I'm glad you came. How did you get your fingers round it? Yeah. Right, now, um, if you came last year, you'll know what I'm about to tell you. Well, you will when I've said it. Um, the uh, traditional sort of funerals down amongst the... Uh, what am I allowed to call them now? Black? Dark? Colour? Black. 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 Not, 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 all right. Right. The traditional funeral was that the band would walk slowly behind the coffin in what was called the second line. Okay and they would play quite slowly behind the coffin, very solemn. And then once the coffin was lowered in the ground, they turned around smartly and marched back a bit quick to have one hell of a party. <laughs> and uh, this, supposedly, this number, uh, reflects that. So that's why Audrey says it starts slowly, because I'm about to be buried. <laughs> <laughs> Nice to be among friends. <laughs> anyway, this is called Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Its alternative name is Second Line. So now you know why. Okay, thank you. So, oh, brushes. Hang on. <laughs> I found one. I'll be home this week. Oh, uh, the chimney sweeps. Right, okay. Just a, oh sorry, just a closer walk with thee, starting slowly because you picture the coffin. Yeah? Good.
Yeah. Anyway, thank you. you. You got into the party spirit, didn't you? See, once the body's gone, you can just enjoy yourself, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you, you may think, or you might not, I don't know. Anyway, you might think that all this music is American, but uh, we'd like to uh, acknowledge that some of the great jazz players of this sort of music in the last 30, 40 years are British. Hip hip! Jolly good. Um, and among the people that uh, made trad jazz uh, favourite again, Chris Barber, who sadly can't come to festival next year, even though he's 90 and we're 50, because he fell over at home and I don't know what damage he did, but he retired. Ah, oh, yeah, it's sadder than that, actually. But anyway, but anyway uh, he's still alive, which is a, a great thing. And of course, he's more or less single-handedly responsible for introducing blues uh, when he first of all played with Ken Collier and then he kicked Ken Collier out and carried on with his own band. And uh, he spawned the likes of Kenny Ball yes. and Ackerbilk. Yeah, you know, well, some of you know, don't you? Yeah, anyway. Uh, anyway, late greats, sadly. Now, Kenny Ball had a, a marvellous talent for converting folk songs into trad jazz music. And this one we're going to play, assuming Dave is up for it, are you, David? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dave is going to pretend he's Kenny Ball now. As we play, uh, I think it's a Russian folk tune by the looks of the names of the people that. Uh, wrote the original song Vasily Soloviev Sidoy and Matsusu I think that's probably Russian, don't you? Anyway, we'll pretend it's Russian and this is this is Kenny Ball's musical arrangement and he called it Midnight in Moscow One, two, three, four
Yeah, you might have noticed. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, we'll play another Kenny Ball one shortly, but in between times, uh, you might remember. Do you remember Ackerbill? Yes, you yeah. said you did. Yeah. Yeah. I always tell this little story. You know what his proper name is? No. No, Bernard. He was a milkman. Yeah, he used to stir the milk with a black stick of his. Yeah. Uh, no, Acker comes from Somerset slang for mate. So he was my mate Bernard, Acker, Bill. Anyway, this song he originally wrote, supposedly, for his daughter. Uh, but then, before he actually uh, recorded it, published it, he was asked by the BBC to write a tune, uh, to be the theme tune, of a new TV show that they were going to present. So he pulled this song out of the drawer and amended it, uh, supposedly in the BBC canteen on a napkin or similar, and out it came. And it accompanied the TV show, Stranger on the Shore. So do I. And you might remember it. Anybody remember it? <laughs> I hope you recognise it anyway. <laughs> if, if you don't remember. <laughs> We're on a winner here, aren't we? Nobody knows this one. <laughs> you don't know it either, no. Okay. This was written in 1939 originally in Germany. But, yeah, well. Some of you were around, I think, then, just a minute. Okay, so do I. A one, two, one, two.
Speakeasies, nightclubs, brothels, uh, jazz clubs. Still is. And, uh, still is, probably. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, apparently, it was getting a little bit out of hand. So, a, a senator of the time called Story, I don't know what his first name was. Did anybody know his first name? No, we'll call him Bob. Shall we? Oh, no, sorry, Bob. I don't, mean, don't, don't mean to blind you. Right. Right, yeah. yeah, okay. Anyway, he decided that uh, if you can't stop it, you best make money out of it. So he sort of colonised all the brothels and the ladies of the night into a sort of square. You know how Americans run their roads like an axis? Right. Well, there was a block, thank you, that's the word. Um, and uh, it became known as Storyville. Um, and that's where streets like Basin Street, Bourbon Street, and a few others. And the one, we haven't played it tonight, but there is a piece of music called Canal Street Blues. Canal Street supposedly ran right through the middle of Storyville. And on the left were the blacks, and on the right were the whites. And that's how it was. Um, they had to shut it down in World War One because too many sailors were becoming infected, so they... Uh, um, they needed them to fight, so Storyville, I was going to say went the way of all flesh, but that's probably not true. <laughs> anyway, apparently when they sort of finished playing in these clubs and speakeasies and dives, sort of two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, they all um, absconded, if that's the word, or whatever. Anyway, to a, a, a cafe on the perimeters that uh, had a tin roof. And, and they just jam jazz until the small hours, probably aided by a little smoke of something or other, give them weight, and then they went to bed. Anyway, this is in honour of that particular time, piece written in 1923 called Tin Roof Blues.
Sinru Flues, 1923. Thank you. Now, I've been told I've got to do what Audrey tells me this time. Yeah. You see this thumbprint? Yeah. I'm not a Hindu, I promise. Yeah. Um, this is uh, a piece um, named after a river in uh, Kentucky, I think. Where's Kentucky? Next to Louisiana, that's right. Okay, good. Okay. It's called Warbash Blue.
Yeah, well, there's only a guy. David. Yeah. Dave is a proper musician. You see, so he reads these things on the bottom of the piece of music. They're called dynamics. Anybody play music? Yes. Yeah. The, the ending of that one was supposed to be MP, which the trumpeters always uh, translate as mighty powerful, but. Uh, it's meant to be. I don't, what's the Latin? What's the Pianissimo. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I feel a bit pianissimo tonight. That piano's quite strong. Yeah. Anyway, this is for the numerate amongst you. This is our penultimate number. Oh. 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 But, oh. but. It's one for you to sing. Oh, we will. Yeah. Because we are happy, aren't we? Yes. And you're only happy when what? When you're smiling. Anyway, Vicky's going to sing it. And you, you can join in. We'll play it three times. Or more if you're feeling good, boys. Anyway, this is When You're Smiling. by a black cornetist called W.C. Handy. There's a joke in there, but I'll resist it. And uh, it'll give the band, each member of the band will have a, a short solo in this. And uh, I'll call out their names, and if you liked it, you can clap. And if you didn't like it, you can throw money. <laughs> Yeah, and I call out the names when they finish, but some of the newcomers here think when I call out the name, they're supposed to start playing, but there we are. Then you'll know when to come in, won't you? Yeah. 
But I don't want people to applaud before they've heard it, you see. No, no, no. Anyway, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anyway, this is a famous old uh, uh, Dixieland favourite, made famous by all sorts of people. It's called St. Louis Blues. <laughs> player David because it's the last day that he's going to be 79. <laughs> David, uh, this band wouldn't have been what it is without you so I don't know whether that's good or bad. But, uh, we love you and uh, I'm going to keep talking until a certain cake appears. We put parade candles on it because of the fire risk. So, uh, are you singing? It's, uh, so, are you ready, people?
Bang, 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 bang,